I've got Blake Young with, he's the president and CEO and co-founder of New Canoe Kayak. So, you know, unless you're just freshly into the sport, uh, New Canoe has been a huge, huge player in the scene. And most people are either very curious or just absolutely cult-like following uh, with uh, with their customers there. So uh, really excited to have him on here. I'm going to go ahead and bring him on. Uh, we'll kind of go through a Q&A back and forth here, and then we'll kind of address questions, uh, you know, questions and comments here throughout. But uh, we'll get to try to get to as many of you as we can. But uh, look forward to look forward to doing some back and forth there. And without further ado, I've got Blake Young here with New Canoe. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Andy. How are you, man? Awesome. Man, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks for joining us, by the way. I know. Uh, I know your schedule, I'm sure, especially this time of year, it gets a little crazy and hectic, but uh, definitely appreciate the time here. Yeah, certainly. It's worked out great. I'm back in Bellingham at uh, headquarters this week, so time difference worked out, and it's uh, yeah. great to connect with you and have a better backdrop than I'm just in a little cubicle <laughs> office back in Florida. So I hear you. I, that's a beautiful kayak you got back there. Yeah, yeah. We're, uh, we're trying to get them out so everyone can see them, but it's, uh, it's hard to keep up. Yeah, and 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 I get that. We're we're definitely not in COVID, uh, like you know. Again, that was a, its own set of challenges there, of course. But uh, I tell you what, um, I know you know. I'm sure all over the country, but uh, I know from you know the my store, uh, Ozark Mountain Trading Company, uh, it it has just been flying off. I think we had about half of them sold before we even had the truck in, and then the other half has just been uh, just just been really really nice. Uh, and, you know, not to get too far into it just right off the bat, but probably my favorite thing about that U10 has been the utilization of space. You know, obviously, it's not the big 12 and a half footer that the, you know, the bigger brother is. But, uh, you know, I did my walkthrough video and then I did my on the water video. And that was the one thing that I noticed immediately was having the flush mount rod holders up against me a little bit better, uh, right. still having plenty of tank wells, still having plenty of room in the front. And honestly, those uh, probably the biggest surprise to me was the catchboard uh, mounts doing the 26 and the 32. I think that was a, that was a game changer to me because it just pretty much most of the kayaks that have that compartment or that setup pretty much only caters to the 26. I like the fact that you did both of them. So just, just personal thing there. And then Hedging our bets a little bit too, because you never know when someone's going to come out with the board. That's a little bit longer. A little that's bit very true. Control. And we're not all just bass fishing. There's a lot of walleye fishermen out there. There's tournaments that do that. You know, uh, obviously we want to promote those people doing that without the the weights and the bellies. So I know that was sure. big, that definitely got some eyes on the walleye fishing sport there for a while. So. Yeah, no doubt. So just starting off, tell me a little about yourself. Uh, you know, what, what what got you into paddle sports? What got you ultimately, uh, you know, talk about pre-new canoe days, I guess. Sure. Well, I'm a little bit of an outlier, I think, in this industry because it does feel like most people kind of get into it from the enthusiast, you know, side of it where it's something they love and they do and they have an idea and they want to run with it. Um, I have a little bit different background. Um I went to uh, I went to college four years. I was in the army, so I did ROTC when I was in college. Spent four years in the army. Came back to Bellingham after that. My background was kind of finance, accounting, um, but really just always, you know, running a business sort of thing. Um, you know, I had my own businesses when I was in high school, just doing, you know, construction cleanup or this or that. A lot of odd, you know, random stuff in a sense, but. I just never really had a job per se outside of my four years in the army. So when I got back here, I was working with business owners, started working with business owners on, you know, how to manage and, you know, set up their county and run their business and kind of, you know, just get everything moving and working well so they could, you know, grow their business, take care of their customers, do all that kind of stuff. And I got connected with um, Tim Niemeyer, who had previously founded Ocean Kayak and then sold it and then was essentially starting over again. Um, and they had a, he had a company called wild design that he founded and had the new canoe, the new, it was just called the new canoe 12 at that point. And we, we now we call it the classic 12 and he was, you know, at the point where he's like, you know, 
I think I like coming up with ideas and hatching them, but not yeah. running with them. Yeah, yeah. And so I looked at it and kind of talked to him and said, well, man, I think that's, I'm kind of the opposite. I don't know how I'm going to hatch an idea or a product, but I think I can run with it once it's there. <laughs> so, and then the designer, James, is still with us today. You know, we were looking at it and talking and like, man, this would be a great little fishing boat, put rod holders here, put a motor back there, do this stuff. And so Tim and I worked out a little deal and I took over the new canoe, you know, brand and line and just, you know, started running with it. Nice. And for the first four years, it was doing it on the side of my other business, you know, trying to get our feet underneath us, learn the market and stuff. And then 2011, we designed the Frontier 12. And I just got married in January of 2011 and somehow convinced my wife to put all her stuff in storage in <laughs> September of that year and head out for three three months across, across the country. Um, the Toyota 4Runner, a trailer and a small dog and two prototype Frontier 12s. Nice. And so we spent we spent three months, about fifteen thousand miles that fall, just going around to to dealers, prospective dealers, anybody we could find, and saying this is what we got coming, and really made a big difference. You know, a lot of people that had kind of been familiar with the classic twelve, um, but were like, yeah, it's just not quite there. Saw the Frontier twelve, and we're like, yeah, that's it. We want to carry those, and the customer, you know, just customers and anglers kayak fishermen that you know came out and visited us on our stops you know we're, we're stoked about it love the stability the open deck and all the possibilities so it was uh you know it was it was a great time it was learning as we go yep. and just kind of figuring it out day by day nice yeah um i mean my background is mostly fishing and uh and my background obviously i was in uh insurance so I, I've been in sales pretty much most of my life. And, uh, you know, I've always enjoyed the water. We live in an area, we have two very large lakes. We have the first national river here and we, you know, we have a lot of creeks and streams, skinny water. So it's pretty much kind of pick your poison. And then Christina here, I'll let her talk about her background. Um, <clears throat> I'm a biologist by trade, okay. <laughs> specifically with marine and freshwater biology. So nice. um, paddle boarding was kind of my first love. Kayaking was my second. I've been, I was in his Unlimited. I was in his Frontier. I liked them both. <laughs> yeah. Not, uh, so we've, we were, uh, I worked at all, I worked in an all state office here locally during COVID. And, you know, we, we kind of, you know, we, we live in an area where there's plenty of water and we thought, well, you know, we were, we saw some kayaks out and I was like, you know, that just sounds really, that just looks like it'd be really fun. So we went out, uh, we went to Ozark Mountain Trading Company here, got a couple of kayaks. We were really thrilled with the purchase. They were kind of recreational. Well, we right. got on the water and we realized really quick that the fishing was kind of what we were more interested in. And, you know, it's just there wasn't a whole lot available because this was 2020 and then almost getting into 2021 here. And then I started, uh, I started managing the store here in 20, you know, like February of 21. And then at that point, I started seeing a whole different side. We we're starting to get some shipments in of kayaks I'd never even heard of. <laughs> and we had a Frontier 12, and I'm a red and black guy. So it was a it was a bulldog Frontier 12. And I saw that seat and I'm like, man, that thing is wide and stable. And I was just, I was texting her. I was like, I think, I think we might be getting a different kayak here. And literally some guy just came in and just paid cash for it and bought it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I told her, I was like, well, it's probably best. You know, I was like, oh, we'll enjoy our kayaks. And then literally the more I got to, because I was a researching machine, because I am I know certain kayaks, but I didn't know all of them. And I wanted to know all of them. And, you know, the more, the more I got to research, and the more I was like, man, that swivel seat, that stability, that open deck. You know, we have dogs, so it gives us the ability to take a dog with us and we're not cluttered up. A lot of fly fishermen around here. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we have a, a, the White River here that's generated off two dams, and it's world class trout fishing. So that again, the open deck concept always comes back to people. And so I bought it, and I just absolutely loved it. Had the pivot drive on it. Um, the, the year after that, I ran the Unlimited with the XI three on it. Loved it, and just um, it's just uh, and, and customers obviously 
kind of gravitate to that. And I think that seat really sells it more than anything. But obviously, just what's the number one question we get asked is stability. Right. You know, how stable is it? And when you're talking about the new canoe lineup, it's pretty easy to talk about a 41 inch wide boat being stable. Definitely. Definitely. So, so Uncle David Outdoors here just asked, um, and big shout out to him. Uh, he's one of my guys that works with me at the store. Uh, how did the name New Canoe come about? So that one actually predates me. So it was um, it was Tim Wild Design and, and James that you know had the you know the design concept for the classic you know the, the well the New Canoe at that point, point. Um, and the vision was to make something that was you know, more about what you're going to do on the water than a kayak or a canoe that was to go paddle on the water. Yeah. Because, you know, 15 years ago, it was, you got a kayak or a canoe to go paddling. You know, a canoe you could do a lot more in um, with the space. But, you know, the idea of like going out and spending all day fishing or going hunting out of these boats, you know, just didn't, it just yeah. wasn't there. So they designed something that was more open, more versatile, and, you know, wanted to keep the connection to, you know, kind of the roots of it and just kind of stuck came up with new canoe is like hey it's not a you know it, it's a canoe but it's a whole new concept and okay nice. and you spelling just to be a little bit more unique and distinctive um and it's one of those names that honestly it was kind of you know for a while it felt like it was you know maybe holding you back because people thought oh canoe i don't want canoe <laughs> yeah. but then once it kind of got over the hump and there was enough brand recognition and the market shifted then it became like a real nice asset because it was so distinct and it was so clean and just yeah. and simple that went from being kind of like, oh, people hear canoe and go, no, new canoe and say, no, I don't want a canoe to thinking, oh, new canoe. Yeah, I want one of those. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I, and Stephen, I'm not skipping over you there. I've seen you ask that question there. So behind him, you can see uh, if you want to kind of point that. Yeah, so we got the catch board. Yeah. And, and then there's the, uh, I got the anchor wizard here. This one's all rigged up. Um, the other place you can definitely see it is newcanoe.com and look at the U10 page. Yes. But, um, well, that's in there pretty good. But it's got the little, um, you know, the deck pads here and it's got the ledge. So that fits right across there, right in front of the seat. And it's got the deck pad. So it gives it some grip. So it's not going to kind of slide and shift around. It's and like you mentioned, it's got the, the two tiers. So one's, you know, measured for like a 26 inch board and the other for a 32. And it's got a little wiggle room. So it's not something where it's um, trying to get too cute and some are going to fit and some don't, but, you know, give a little bit of space. So it's going to work for everybody. And Sean just said great service and warranty support. And I, uh, again, working for a retailer, which again, you know, that, that gives me kind of a unique experience with it. Um, you know, there's a lot of good companies out there, obviously, but, you know, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm all behind that. Um, you know, I, you know, uh, that's just the real realization of kayaks in general, or just anything retail. Sometimes things don't go right. Sometimes things happen. And, uh, you know, as long as I feel like people feel like they're taken care of and, you know, they don't have to worry about this big investment they're making. Um, it's, it gives us a lot more confidence pushing product, obviously. Yeah, that's, um, you know, we definitely appreciate that comment. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've always just tried to take care of people, do the right thing. And, yeah. you know, for a long time, like, you know, we're a pretty small company. We don't want a bad reputation. We show, And, you know, we're also like, there was never any, you know, a lot of layers from like someone having an issue and me hearing about it. Usually, yeah. you know, for a lot of years, I'd be the first one to hear about it. So, you know, I don't want people to have problems with their boats, you know, so we've always tried to work it out and fix it. And, you know, if there's something wrong, sometimes a little back and forth, dialing in exactly what the problem is and what the best way to resolve it is. But my, you know, our goal is always that in the end, someone's satisfied and can use their, use their new canoe for, you know, as long as they want to. And hopefully it's many, many years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, new fishing asks, uh, would love to see more new canoe merch. My license plate is new canoe and folks ask me about it all the time. Would like to have a full array of branded items. That's awesome. I think I've seen a picture of that license plate. <laughs> but that's something we've talked about. And, uh, you know, we talked about more today. It, you know, we'd love to get some more merchandise and have more, you know, things available. It's always just, a, you know, kind of trying to find the right balance. Yeah. You know, what stuff we can do, what we can do well, 
you know, maintained for inventory, purchasing supply, have a nice design quality, um, you know, without taking focus away from, you know, the product. But exactly. we're, we're going we're gonna to work through that a little bit this summer and try to come up with, uh, you know, some more offerings and um, have a little bit broader selection of, uh, of new canoe gear for the future. And, uh, and uh, so the biggest question I had um, was, so, and, and I've, I've said this a couple of different times, was the kayak industry as a whole and kayak fishing in particular, it's been a bit of a transition. So, you know, we, we're, we're out of COVID. The supply chain is, for the most part, kind of corrected itself. So where do you see the state of the kayak industry or kayak fishing industry today where do you see it going in five years? So get your crystal ball out a little bit, I guess. Yeah. Well, going back a few years, you know, from 20, you know, I'll say 15 to 2019, you know, there was a lot of growth. There was a lot of innovation. There's pretty broad swath of brands and models, um, you know, that, uh, that, that, that were doing well. Um, you hit COVID and, you know, then anything that was in stock sold, you know, as you yeah. said with that Frontier 12 Bulldog, you know, you're looking at it fresh off the truck and someone shows up with cash. Yeah. And says, Thank you very much. You know? <laughs> and during COVID, it didn't matter what model it was. You know, yeah. anything you can get in the store is going to go out the door. And then post COVID, you know, when about the same time as like supply is really increasing and demand is going down, then you like inventory glut. And then really kind of what's happened the last couple of years is stuff that's innovative that has a unique offering that, you know, is a quality product that, you know, gives anglers something that really um, meets their needs. Mm -hmm. Those are selling well. The stuff that doesn't is hard to move. Yeah. So before you may have had, you know, a, a wide number of brands and models that would sell well. Now it seems like that's really compressed. A hundred percent. And yeah. so for us, the unlimited, the U10, boom, you know, they're going really well. Um, you know, so we're feel pretty good that we have two models that are really doing well. And this, you know, they didn't totally, but essentially kind of replaced or upgraded on the Frontier 12 and F10. So it's not a shock to us that those models have declined. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot kind of more narrow market where, where it's, you know, the stuff that's doing, you know, that the people want is selling really well. And I think there's some brands and, you know, the last five, six years that haven't innovated. And, yeah. you know, if you haven't innovated, you haven't come up with new stuff, you haven't done some unique things um, or others that have kind of gone a different, you know, a different channel than yeah. higher quality specialty retailer made in the USA that have kind of pursued a different path. You know, they may be selling well in, in their channels, but they're kind of like a little bit out of our space you know, maybe more than five years ago. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and, I mean, as far as going forward, I think, you know, innovative products, you know, things that really do work well, um, motors are going to continue to yeah. grow because in the end, this is much more about fishing than it is about paddling. Yeah. And when it's about fishing, you know, you don't, you'd rather just have a little motor to get you where you want to go. And fortunately, you know, motor electronics, that kind of stuff, the innovation is quick. And yeah. a lot of times you're going to get, you know, better products at a lower cost, you know, as you go forward, especially with the lithium batteries and, you know, the innovation at, at Newport, you know, now they got a better NK180 coming Yep. at the same that's price right. as the other one. So you, you really get a lot of, um, and that's just going to continue to accelerate, which is going to make the motors and the batteries and the whole systems, um, you know, bring the price point of those down or yeah. give you a lot better product at the same price. That's exactly right. Uh, so that, um, that, that's just kind of a point that I've made a lot is prices, in my opinion, at least prices have kind of leveled off a little bit. So we're not seeing that extreme increase that we saw just a few years ago, but now what you're getting is you're starting to see the prices aren't going down, but you're getting a little bit more. There's a little bit more of a value oriented sell than there. And when you get, like you said, companies that innovate, companies that are giving you, like you said, everything you want or everything you need or are listening to the customers, they're doing really well because the space got really crowded there for a little bit. Now you're starting to see some of those fall off a little bit. They're still out there, but there may not be as in demand as they were before. 
and you're starting to see that phoenix rising from the ashes, if you will. Right. Let's see. see, Sean says, don't ever change the seats. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we brought out those fusion seats in uh, November of 2019. Mm -hmm. It was actually kind of a day three of ICAST thing where I just said, you know, let's go talk to those guys. And we got a list of things they're going to have to do if they want to adapt, you know, for Millennium. It's a Millennium seat. But, you know, we don't want to use their off the shelf seat, but they're going to have to do, you know, this, this, this and this to make it work for us. We went and told them that, and they said, okay, we'll get your prototype sent out next week. <laughs> They're like, oh, really? Oh, wow, this is cool. Yeah. And then the real beauty of it is, you know, that was right before COVID. And the yeah. prior seat we had was way more labor intensive, just a whole lot more difficult to produce. And there's no way we could have done the volume on those seats through those high demand COVID years that we did on the, yeah. on the fusion seat. So not only was it a much better product, but it really had a huge impact on our ability to execute over the ensuing two years when yeah. things were going crazy. And it got real tight there. I mean, there's some times where we're like running out of seats two days before they come in, but it never, you know, had a substantial impact on, you know, our ability to get boats out to our customers and dealers. Yeah. Yeah, those years you were talking about, I remember them very well. That was uh, that was it, the insanity of that two year span. I mean, we were we were selling off a packing list instead of what was on the floor, and in a lot of instances, we were having customers helping us unload the trucks into their vehicle. So some of those models never even saw the showroom floor. So if somebody says, "Hey," or because uh, the unlimited came out it was 21 wasn't it correct yeah okay so the unlimited when it came out you know of course there's this big you know the, the the big marketing push and everyone's seeing it and everyone's wanting it because the frontier 12 was already popular and that's another thing about new canoe products is there does seem to be an evolution so it's you know like you said the classic and then you kind of see where the frontier evolved from that and then even the unlimited from the frontier and you know but when you see that, that always gets me excited because it's always wondered what's next, you know, what, and that can be a dangerous thing too, of course, but. Well, it goes back to what you said about the U10, about the use of space mm -hmm. is we probably couldn't have done that if it was like a whole different concept and idea, yeah. but I'm like, you can't see it here, but up on the top of our little, you know, mezzanine is a classic 12, you know, just for like nostalgia's sake. Yeah. And you can see the distinct similarities between that and the Unlimited. I mean, those boats are 15 years apart and light years away from each other in terms of evolution and refinement. But, you know, you can definitely see that they're related. Yeah, and yeah absolutely. Because our philosophy has been more, you know, stick within the same concept and, and iterate and improve the Classic 12 to the Frontier 12 to the Unlimited. Now the U10, it's like every time we do it, we just you know, we, we learn what works well and what doesn't, yeah. and we can keep what works well, improve upon what work does, what doesn't work. And on the unlimited, one of the things we saw was, Hey, there's, there's different and better ways we can use the space, you know, between the rails, the seat tracks and the gunnels. Yeah. And you know, when we designed the U10, we we're really looking at, you know, how can we maximize that and put as much functionality in there as possible without adversely impacting somebody who's not going to use that feature. Yeah. So if someone never uses a, a measure catch board, a measuring board on that U10, that little board shelf is not going to adversely impact them. And you yeah. can still use it to hook lures in or do other things. So it's it's multifunctional and it's an awesome solution for a measuring board. But you don't have to use a measuring board to appreciate that space or or you know gain something from it. So Buzz put in a question here and and I'm admittedly don't know a whole lot about that. Uh, talk about the move of production to North Carolina and how that impacted the company. What's up, Buzz? Buzz is down in Florida. He's one of our team guys, so national team. So thanks thanks for watching, man. Um, we moved the production. We've always had a, essentially a man, manufacturing partner um, for New Canoe. And so we've, you know, that, that's shifted a few times over the years. You know, our boats yeah. were made in, here in Bellingham. Then they're made in Ohio, then Wisconsin. And Wisconsin, 
the the factor there was a great fit for a number of years good people but over time you know their business changed ownerships their people inside changed and you know the reality of getting uh you know manufacturing kayaks in a factory that's kind of a universal rotor holding about every you know does every product it just got more and more challenging to get the the quality that we wanted the attention to detail that we wanted the execution the capacity yeah. you name it it was like we've done as much as we can do um and you know during the COVID years there's no capacity anywhere yeah you couldn't buy a roto molding oven you couldn't get an inch of you know you couldn't get one cycle to run a product with anybody else because they're running everything they have as fast as they can yeah but outside of you know a couple of years later you know there's a lot of capacity in the industry so we looked at setting up our own manufacturing um we talked to others that were existing kayak manufacturers um and over the course of a year we really just felt that uh partnering with big adventures for our manufacturing was was a win-win yeah. you know they have a great facility with amazing people and lots of uh you know ovens and just you know they're dialed in to roto mold assemble and ship kayaks it's what they do that's what they're good at and that's exactly what we needed and so and they were looking saying hey we have all these ovens we can't run because demand's down and you know they want to fill the ovens keep their people working and, and maintain the capacity so it was a really nice fit and we've been really pleased with uh you know with the results of that and you know i know that anytime you start something new you got hiccups and challenges and we've been through some just kind of getting everything dialed in and optimized and you know we're continuing to work with them to do that but you know i can't imagine what position we'd be in today if we'd have, you know just kind of stuck it out where we were it'd be a lot bigger challenge. Yeah. And it's also great to kind of, you know, they're, they're a like-minded company with like-minded brands that, you know, are yeah. in the same, the same realm as us. So if we can strengthen each other, you know, and be able to, um, you know, make high quality made in the USA products and sell them through independent specialty retailers, that's what we both want to be doing. Yep. And neither one of us want to get squeezed out of that because, you know, of whatever pressures or, you know, other things come in. That's one thing that I've noticed more than anything. And, and again, I'm, I'm a whole, you know, I've just, I've been doing the whole YouTube thing for just about a year, but the collaboration piece of it. Now, obviously you've seen companies kind of merge together, like, you know, like native and, and bonafide and, and, and several others there, but uh, there does seem to be a very, and I come from some dog eat dog worlds. It's very uh, refreshing, I guess you could say. Obviously, everybody's competing against each other, but it's for that greater good. No one's trying to knock anyone off the ladder, so to speak. But, uh, you know, because to me, I love competition. Um, competition just makes us all better. Right. But, uh, you know, now obviously, you know, some people get that, some people don't. But, uh, you know, I, 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 Personally, and, I, and I'll get on my sh soapbox there just for a little short time, support of retail business has been kind of a, a peeve of mine here the last couple of years. I definitely commend you guys for su supporting that. Um, there's a lot of small ways that you do that, obviously, but, uh, you know, uh, the whole direct to customer market is starting to kind of get some light shined on it. And, you know, I'm, I feel like we're in a unique, uh, a, a unique position here because we've been around for a while and we're large, but those smaller mom and pop shops are kind of, you're starting to see some of them go up and, uh, you know, that, that hurts everybody. I think, uh, it, it hurts us. It hurts the, the manufacturer, I think. And, you know, cause that's less satellite offices pushing that product. Right. And, uh, you know, it's just, those are people that handle the warranty that, now, obviously, you guys have a great customer service and a great warranty department, but without that that kind of buffer there, you guys don't want to be fielding all of those calls, I'm assuming. Um, no, we, we don't want to field those calls. And, you know, it's a great uh, value added to have a partner like yourself yeah. and, you know, so many of our dealers that, you know, invest in our product to bring it in their store to have, um, you know, staff that know it and, you know, know how to talk about it, know how to set yeah. things up, can be a resource to customers to get them in the product that's right for them and to, you know, resolve issues and help, uh, 
you know, address anything that comes up along the way. I mean, the idea of like putting on your website and selling direct and, you know, selling it for retail price, like, oh yeah, it's exciting. But then when you add in all the realities of customer service, education, shipping, damage, support, it's like, no, I'd rather send OMTC 20 kayaks and have them make 20 new customers and then send them 20 more kayaks. Absolutely. (laughs) And, you know, we've always wanted to have long-term relationships with our dealers. We, uh, the, the dealer committed kind of platform that we, you know, put out about four or five years ago is something that we've kind of always done. We just stopped to take the time to say, well, what do we really do here? What's, what are we committing to with our dealers and yeah. our actions day by day that we can, you know, define and man, I'd love to have great retailers like yourselves. And you know, like I said, many of ours that, that know our products well, that can take care of customers and, you know, post some killer builds with ideas that I never would have thought of, or, yeah. you know, Brian or James never would have thought of. And that, and that, you know, and I'll kind of touch on another thing there too. Um, I mean, it's also our responsibility to, to be good partners as well. I mean, that's got to be reciprocal. Uh, we, we, you know, you know, people that are, you know, the, again, we saw a lot of shops open up too, uh, you know, during COVID trying to capitalize on that increased demand and, you know, um, a good paddle shops worth its weight in gold, no matter where it's at, but also a bad one can really, I say bad, just maybe just inexperience is a better word. Um, because you know, a lot of this product kind of sells itself, but, uh, you know, we just, I get a lot of emails, I get a lot of texts and stuff. And, and it's a lot of people saying, you know, I really wish we could buy from you guys because the shop near me just doesn't have this or, you know, if you go to them, they say, well, I can order it. They don't keep stuff in stock and, you know, they can order it too. Uh, but, you know, it just also as a retailer, keeping up our end of the bargain too, and uh, being a, being a, that good retailer, not just a, another retailer. Uh, order my new canoe unlimited from five mountain outfitters. Brian there was phenomenal during the whole process. The one thing he kept saying was how great you are and your team and level support. Yeah. Awesome. But we like Brian too. He's a good guy. Good shot. <laughs> yeah. So and that's from Travis earlier about the, uh, the pedal system. <coughs> so it's a good question. Something we've talked about this week is I've been back here. We've been going through product and stuff and, Ooh. you know, any, I mean, any, any news you want to break here? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about Travis's question here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we've definitely looked at that, but then if you say, okay, what would it, you know, I assume what you mean by dedicated pedal system, you, you know, I could, you know, through the hole through the yeah, center of the deck in. floor and it drops in and all that stuff. And if you do that to the unlimited, then you've kind of taken away a lot of what the unlimited is with the open deck, the customizability, the versatility. Yeah. And you've brought it a lot closer to where other brands are already at. Yep. So, I, I could see that it could be a cool thing, but you know, until we can figure out a way to do it in a way that maintains everything that's unique, the openness, the customizability, the platform style design of the unlimited and have a pedal system that's going to have, you know, a unique value add value proposition to yeah. what else is out there. You know, it's probably something we'll just kind of, you know, keep on the back burner until we can crack that code. Yeah. Because, I- if we came out with an unlimited pedal kayak, it wouldn't be, it'd be different, but it wouldn't be yeah. hugely different than, you know, the other dedicated pedal kayaks that are on the market today. And would that cannibalize the sales of the other one? You know, right. are, are, you, are you gaining additional sales or are you just splitting the same amount up into two there? Because uh, I, I, I we, we feel that question a lot where somebody will see, uh, a pedal drive kayak and they say, well, I want to motorize it. Is there a version of this where I can get it without the pedal drive? And, it, you know, and there's other ones that say, well, where's the pedal drive go to, you know, it, it I personally, I like the fact that you can put it on or take it off. Um, and the reason being is it allows somebody to purchase a kayak and build it incrementally. Cause I always tell people your needs will change over time you may want pedal drive today. You may want to do motor tomorrow. So it allows them to do that. And, 
you know, there's there's a lot of packages out there, but I said, get your foundation right. Get the best foundation you can buy. Then you can build it over time. But if you build a house on a shaky foundation, you're yeah, you're, you're going to have some issues. Another thing to say with that, though, is um, the versatility part is with the pivot drive that you guys have now, you can take it out. Because, I mean, him and I were at this uh, wildlife refuge a couple weeks ago. And even though it's a lake and we took out the U10, it was so shallow that a pedal drive wouldn't have worked yeah. there. So if it's built in, I mm-hmm. kind of I see that as being almost taking away some of that functionality. It would limit the unlimited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was and that was a good experience because that was the uh that was my on the water video of the U10 and we did it at a, a wildlife refuge around you know central Arkansas and shallow, kind of marshy, and I just I knew it would be perfect because I love the way, you know, uh sometimes the lack of tracking can be a benefit if you're in some really tight quarters, and I really like the way that that boat handled and Again, it drafted incredibly shallow. So we were able to go in some really shallow areas with a what I would call a bigger fishing kayak. And I, that's uh, that definitely made it unique because I'm so used to paddling and motorizing around and unlimited there for a long time. Being in that, that I've been in an F10 and I've been in the U10. The U10 felt like a much different kayak to me. Right. Yeah, the, the U10 and the F10 are pretty far apart they really are if, if the f10's here and the unlimited's here you know the u10 is like here yes so yeah. it's it's surprisingly not much of a drop off in terms of stability and tracking and on water performance that was the biggest surprise I, i'm not the best at standing up from kayaks but i had no problem standing up from that and you know it it there was no huge difference between the stability of the 12 and a half and the stability of and in U10, it's more like an 11 foot kayak, really. Right. So I, I right. tell people too, it's like, you know, when you think of 10 foot, you're thinking of a really short, wide kayak. And it's like, it's really not. It's a little bit longer, you know, the 10 foot, 10 inch you know, U10 there. But uh, yeah, it was very, very stable. It maneuvered very, very well. I was able to spin it really quickly. And again, I touched on that earlier is the utilization of the space, where things are located at was all within reach. It didn't feel like too far away. And I just, I, I really like the, I think you guys really hit a home run with that kayak there. Awesome. We're excited about it for sure. Absolutely. Oh, so, and you know, that first time on the water after you designed it and done all the stuff and you get yeah. out there and you're like, okay, this is good. Fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, man. Um, and, you know, just wanted to thank everybody that's watching us from Arkansas here. Um, Apparently the University of Arkansas just hired a head coach for their basketball team and his press conference started about the same time this live stream did. So oh, definitely yeah. appreciate you guys hanging with us here. So. We, know who the, we know who the true fans are now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the true, the true kayakers and anglers. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you get much time and you're, you get much spare time to kind of get out on the water and enjoy uh, some of these creations or. Man, unfortunately, not as much as I would want or would think, but between work and <clears throat> kids and kids activities and family and home life and stuff, it just, man, the weeks go by. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll get out some this summer for sure. And I definitely want to, you know, try getting, you know, st- start getting out more regularly. You know, it's kind of coming, you know, sometimes I am more than others, but yeah. we definitely get out for some good family occasions. Um, you know, get out for some fishing down in Florida. Um, you know, we, when we're back here in the summer, we always get out crabbing. That's been a lot of fun. Ooh, um, yeah. Yeah. There's, a, there's a picture of my wife and our oldest two kids from probably 2018 in a nuclear green Frontier 12 with two crab pots. And I think it's a torpedo motor. And, yeah. you know, we're just out there like six and three at that time or something. And we still use it on the website and in the marketing materials because it really, you know, it really shows the versatility, the functionality, just how, you know, how, how many different ways you can you can use these, yeah. these kayaks for. Because it's not just a fishing kayak, is it? I mean, no, it's definitely it, not. And uh, it's a really cool thing that you could have, you know, a, a, a tournament set up that like, you know, Derek Brundle or 
um, Jake Angulus or some of the tournament anglers, you know, even guys, local tournaments, just local team guys, you know, weekend anglers, just super dialed in like fishing setups. And then that could be configured, you know, switched up to a tandem seat setup just to go out casually, you know, to go float a river, um, you know, or come fall or, you know, turkey season to go hunting in. Yeah. So it's, we really try to, you know, give you all the functionality and allow it to be really customized and specific to what you want to do without that taking away from someone who's going to use it in a different way. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, um, we, we talk about that a lot at the store with customers is, you know, it's not, you know, they sell duck blinds for, it. uh, they, they sell, you know, that you guys sell a lot of different things. Um, and, when you're talking about, you know, bow season, you know, bow hunting for deer, sometimes you're going across some of these creeks and waterways and, you know, having that higher weight capacity, that open deck space. Uh, we watched, I think it was, uh, you guys had like a, and you may still, uh, it was like a outdoors team where it was just, they were in all the new canoes. Um, seek one. Right. Um, and that's, that was just kind of nice to see them, you know, because everybody knows about the unlimited everybody knows about the frontier for the most part. Um, I think one of the most underrated kayaks out there is the Flint. Uh, and again, I'm, you know, and I'm talking about, you know, we're locally here. We have a lot of rivers, a lot of skinny water. Um, the changes made to the Flint this year, uh, backing up on the price, lower seating position. That was a really, that's been a really big thing with customers mm -hmm. here this year. And it looks like you had a little bit of an additional padding, uh, on the deck and the wing knobs, <laughs> right. the wing knobs to me was the thing that I, that caught my first thing. No more cross threading the, 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 the plastic, uh, wing knobs. I mean, just little things like that in a package with, you know, we're talking about value again, better value. Right. Um, you know, and, and when somebody wants something stable, but they also want something that's not going to be like paddling around the dock on the rivers, something that cuts to the water tracks really nicely. And, you know, at I've had people buy big fishing kayaks and they take it out and they said, do you have anything that's a little faster? And that's kind of where the Flint's come into play there. Yeah, the Flint's a great kayak. It's a really nice design. Um, the changes for this year, as you mentioned, have been, you know, dropping that the, the, a, a seat base essentially flat instead of elevated to get the center of gravity down. Because I think the yeah. one thing that's held back the Flint I'll call it like the first five minutes, you know, if someone's going to demo it for five minutes. They might get in there and feel like, Oh, it feels a little squirrely or it may not be quite stable enough. Yeah. Get in another kayak and be like five minutes and go, Oh yeah, this is solid. Yeah. But after an hour or a day, that stable kayak, you don't notice the stability anymore. And you notice how it's difficult to paddle. It doesn't. Track yes. Well, and then you're like, this is no fun to be out in. But yeah. in the Flint, you get used to how it moves. You get used to the, you know, how it doesn't have quite as much initial stability, but it still has really high secondary stability. Yeah. In that little bit of movement side to side, you're not going anywhere. So once you get comfortable with that, then the more time you spend in the Flint, the more you like it. And you just get used to how it moves. And then you really appreciate the speed, the, uh, you know, the tracking, the maneuverability, and just how well it'll perform in a river environment. Yeah. And I think uh, that's been another transition with the kayak fishing uh, industry that I think is going on right now is uh, a lot of people have gone out and they bought these big, the big water, you know, the lake fishing setups. And some people may not have been as into tournament fishing as they thought they were going to be. And we're starting to see a lot more people go back to that quick throw and go. Because uh, I always say the best fishing stories start with that last minute trip. Like right. let's just go down the let's go down the river. Let's take a sh mm -hmm. short float. Let's fish that area. And I thought the uh, that was another thing that excited me about when I heard the U10 was coming out was that's perfect because that gives you the functionality you get in the unlimited, but a throw and go you get with a smaller package. And the Flint's good. The Flint is still kind of in that space, obviously. But you know sometimes you know, it's a smaller body of water. It's a, uh, maybe a wider river or just like I was in that one day, that little bit of a marshy area is perfect for that. Mm -hmm. Especially that high seat position there. Um, I got a question here from Camaro Steve. So 
how well does the pedal drive hold up in salt water and are there different propellers available for more speed versus ease of pedaling? Um, it holds up well in salt water. We haven't had any, you know, issues with any sort of rust or corrosion with it. You know, the components are either stainless steel or aluminum and they've, uh, they've held up well. And like I said, you know, we just haven't had any issues in the four plus years of the pivot drive with any, uh, you know, adverse reaction to salt water. As far as the different props, um, no, we don't have any different props available. Over the years, we have tested a few others to try to see if we could get different kind of performance characteristics, but it's never quite worked out where we felt like, yeah, this is going to be an improvement or this is going to be something that's worth, you know, moving forward with. Oh, Glenn. Yeah, man, uh, Glenn, if you're needing a... Uh smaller throw and go kayak come see me buddy <laughs> yeah throw and go boat for uh for a big boy i think that's a winner man that you tend yeah. to be exactly and, what you need. and let's be honest most of you not all obviously but most of your guys that are out there fishing look like me they're they're big they're tall they might be a little top heavy they might you know uh they they need something a little bit more forgiving to focus on those casts and and that's kind of why why I got bad Chaka says just got my U10 a couple of weeks ago and it's great for throw and go gives me no excuse to stay inside. And that's, that's what it's Perfect. all about there. I will say one thing about the U10, the fact that you guys kept that handle the same oh, as you did on the yes. unlimited. I can thank you for that because yeah. I have to carry kayaks around with him all the time. <laughs> that back handle is amazing. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. If we ever do a kayak that doesn't have that back handle, there's something wrong with us. Cause <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that was uh that was one of those kind of things like at the time it felt a little bit risky, you know, different components, different way it mounted yeah. and installed. And it's like, man, is this all gonna work out? But from the first time I lifted unlimited with that handle, it was like, yeah. okay, this is perfect. Yeah, those those swinging handles create that little bit of a pendulum effect and it mm -hmm. just makes it a little shock a little feel heavier. Up. Oh man. Yeah. Cause that, that T handle on the front tier, that was, that was the yeah. bane of my existence yeah. for a little while. <laughs> yeah. I understand that. <laughs> All right, man. Well, well, Blake, man, I appreciate you getting on. Uh, please appreciate you spending some time. We're at the, uh, 47 minute mark. Uh, man, if, uh, I know you got some family time to uh, to attend to. And again, man, just keep doing what you're doing. And we appreciate you having on. Hopefully uh, next time you guys unveil that new hot kayak on the on the market. Love to have you back on there, buddy. Sweet. That'd be awesome, man. All Hopefully right, that's man. sooner than later. Really All appreciate right. your time. Yeah, certainly, Christina. Thank you. Hey, thanks Good a lot, Blake. On.